If you've been in Bitcoin for a while, you've probably heard this idea of get your coins off of exchanges. You don't want something like FTX to happen again and to lose all of your cryptocurrency. And there's even certain Bitcoiner friendly products out there that will automatically withdraw your funds from their exchange onto your cold storage wallet automatically for you so that you never have to think about this problem. And a lot of you here on this channel have probably seen some of the content that I've created around automatically withdrawing your cryptocurrency from some of these different exchanges out to a wallet that you control on a week basis. And while this is a really good way to protect yourself against these exchange insolvencies, there's one major risk that me and all of these different Bitcoin companies have not been talking about. And it's something that if you don't take care of pretty soon, you might be one of the people that ends up feeling the most rugged out of anyone in the Bitcoin space. And so that's why today we're going to be talking about UTXOs. UTXO stands for unspent transaction output, and it's basically the smallest package that Bitcoin can come in. You can kind of think of it as every time you withdraw from a service like Coinbase, you're creating a new UTXO. And that UTXO can contain $5 or $50 or $5 million. And it's carrying that amount of money in the same size of information. And because different amounts of money are stored in the same amount of data, it becomes very important how we manage our UTXOs. Because in a really high fee environment, if you have a lot of UTXOs, you could end up unable to spend any of your Bitcoin. And so at this point, you're probably thinking, what the f another thing for me to learn. I don't know what a UTXO is. I really don't care what a UTXO is. Stop saying all these confusing things and just show me what you mean. So next, let me take you through a very visual example of why withdrawing from your exchange on a weekly basis is actually a really bad thing over the long term. All right, guys. So what I have here is a brand new software wallet on Sparrow Wallet. I'm using Sparrow Wallet because Sparrow Wallet will allow us to see how the UTXOs come in separately when I send the Bitcoin out of Coinbase or whatever exchange that I'm using. So next, if we come over here to Coinbase, Base, we'll see that I have about $128 of Bitcoin just sitting on the exchange. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to withdraw one chunk of Bitcoin in a $50 increment. And then I'm going to withdraw 10 chunks of Bitcoin in $5 increments. So I should have about $100 in my Sparrow wallet. One chunk is going to be just the $50. And the other 10 chunks will be 10 chunks of $5. So I'm going to take this receive address from Sparrow wallet back over to Coinbase, paste that address in here, and I'm going to call this $50 chunk. And we'll go ahead and click on continue and we will send this Bitcoin for about a $2 fee. So I'll click on done here. And now I'm going to click send again, paste in the exact same address. And now I'm going to do a $5 chunk number one. I'm again going to pay about a $2 fee, which is a theme that we're going to pick up on a little bit more later on in the video. So I'll go ahead and click on send. And then I'm not going to bother you doing this 10 times. I'm going to jump to the time once I have sent all 10 of these $5 transactions. All right, guys, so we've got our 11 individual transactions from Coinbase now into the Sparrow wallet, and they've all been confirmed on the blockchain. And as you can see, each withdrawal of the $5 variety was for about 16,000 sats. And the single withdrawal for $50 was about 167,000 sats, which up here, if you can see it comes out to about $100 of Satoshi's right now, it's at $99.96, because the price has fluctuated while we just did all of that sending. So now that we have this $100 of Bitcoin in a single wallet, we can start talking through how Bitcoin transactions actually work. So to see how a transaction actually works visually, let's go ahead and take this $50 transaction and break it up a little bit by sending only $10 of this $50 transaction out of the wallet. So let's go ahead and click here on the send button. We'll go ahead and generate an address for my cold card mark four here. And then we'll go ahead and send something close to $10, 33,500 Satoshis. And we'll call this $10 from the $50 block. And we'll click on create transaction. And then we'll go ahead and send this off. And so what we can see here from this transaction that we just created is that over here on the right side of the screen, there's one input, and then there are two outputs. The input is that one UTXO, that $50 UTXO that we sent over to Sparrow Wallet from Coinbase. And then these two outputs, the first one is the payment over to my cold card of $10. And the second output here is called change. And so basically what's happening is we're taking this single $50 UTXO and we're sending that to the cold card 
card, but we only want to send out a single sliver of that UTXO, that $10 to the cold card. And so the other $40 needs to come back to us in our original wallet as a new $40 UTXO. And so instead of just confusing everyone by saying UTXO over and over again, let's go ahead and copy this transaction ID and head over to mempool.space where we'll get a much more visual representation of what these UTXOs are and what they look like. So here's the transaction that we just sent out of our Sparrow wallet. And I'll leave a link down in the description to this exact transaction. And so what this is showing us down here in this flow diagram is that we had one input to this transaction, which was our 167,000 Satoshi UTXO from Coinbase. And we had two output transactions, that first $10 transaction that went over to my cold card, like we just talked about. And then this second output down here, which is the majority of the funds in this transaction coming back to our Sparrow wallet as that $40 of change. And then obviously every transaction is going to have this fee up here that's being paid to the miner as an incentive to get our transaction confirmed a little bit faster. So this was a very basic transaction. We paid about seven sats per byte, which came out to 30 cents in this situation. Next, let's see what happens if we try to send the same $10 out of the Sparrow wallet to my cold card. But instead of taking from that big $50 UTXO, what happens if we combine two $5 UTXOs? So to send $10 from two of these $5 blocks, let's go ahead down here to UTXOs on the bottom left. And we'll actually select three of these $5 blocks so that we can also pay for the fee associated with the transaction. So let's select these three blocks and then click on send selected down here in the bottom right. We'll choose to send once again, 33,500 Satoshis. We'll call this $10 from two $5 blocks and we'll keep the same address. We'll also keep the same sats per byte of seven sats per byte. And then we'll go ahead and click on create transaction and finalize for signing. It looks like I just sent $10 from the Sparrow wallet to my cold card wallet in both of these cases. But if we dig into what the blockchain actually looks like on mempool.space, we'll see that these two transactions look totally different. So let's go ahead and copy the transaction ID for the second transaction here. So remember, this was the first transaction. We had one input and two outputs, the output to the cold card and the change. But now let's see what this second transaction looks like. So just by looking at the diagram, it looks totally different. We see that now we don't have two inputs. We actually have three inputs because we needed to pay that fee over to the miners. And so we're seeing that the first two inputs basically pay for the entire output. And then almost all of the third input is coming back to the Sparrow wallet as change. What's interesting is that the fee rate for both of these transactions was exactly the same. It was about seven sats per byte. The first transaction, this very basic transaction, cost us only 29 cents. But this second transaction cost us 58 cents, which is twice as much money. And it's not because we paid a higher number here for sats per byte. It's because the transaction, all of these inputs and all of these outputs were literally bigger. The VB or the number of bytes that this second transaction includes is just more than the number of bytes that this first transaction included. And it's because instead of having one input, it had three different inputs. And so now you can start to see the problem. For the last two years, I had been withdrawing every single week any Bitcoin that was on any exchange account of mine to my Casa Multisig, which amounted to hundreds of different UTXOs. And the problem only gets worse the more UTXOs you include. And to prove that out, next I'll go ahead and off screen, I will send just the $40 change block over to the cold card. And then separately in a second transaction, I will send all of the remaining UTXOs also over to the cold card. These transactions individually should both be about the same amount of money. They should both be about $40. But as we'll see, we will pay very different amounts in terms of fees. All right, so it's taking a little while for these transactions to confirm, but we can see both of them on mempool.space and that should be good enough to illustrate the point. So the first transaction here is the $40 that was remaining in the wallet that we sent over to the cold card. Again, we're seeing one input and one output, seven sats per byte, a 23 cent fee. So this is really the benefit of sending a full single UTXO is that the fees are as low as possible, not because we selected a small sats per byte or whatever, but because the actual size, the physical bytes of the transaction is just smaller when you have less UTXO inputs. So if you compare this back to the first transaction, we're seeing about the same fees paid. This was 981 sats. And our third transaction here is 764 sats. And again, it's because there are less inputs. And even on this one, there are less outputs, right? We're not even getting a change transaction. And so our third transaction here is actually even smaller than that very first transaction that we originally sent. So this is actually the most fee efficient transaction that we have sent so far. And next, we're going to see the least fee efficient transaction that we have sent so far, where we've consolidated eight of those different $5 UTXOs 
those into a single transaction. And we're now hitting the highest fee that we've gotten so far at the exact same fee rate where we're now paying a dollar and 22 cents versus the 23 cents, the exact same amount of US dollars being sent in both transactions. And so you might be saying like, Rhett, what's the big deal? A dollar and 22 cents versus 23 cents. Like who cares? That's a dollar. You know, that doesn't really matter to me. And the reason that these numbers are so low right now is that the fee threshold on the entire Bitcoin network right now is just not that high. We can get our transactions confirmed relatively quickly with a seven sat per byte fee attached to them. Whereas if we check out some of these blocks that were mined just 11 weeks ago here, we're seeing the median fee in this block was 156 sats per byte. And so now you're talking about 156 divided by seven, you're talking about 22 times as many fees associated with sending your Bitcoin just 11 weeks ago compared to today. And so you still might be saying, well, Rhett, it's not that big of a deal. Worst case scenario here, I'm only paying $22 for my Bitcoin transaction, but that's actually not the case. If you have been following this channel and if you have been really worried about exchange collapses like FTX or like Celsius or one of these other crazy exchange collapses that we dealt with last year, you might be automatically withdrawing Bitcoin from your exchange to keep your Bitcoin safe off to a cold storage hardware wallet like I have been for the last two and a half years every single week and creating hundreds of different UTX and so what does this look like over time? We'll see here transaction three had the smallest transaction in terms of number of bytes and then transaction one and then obviously transaction two and transaction four. Now, what are these transaction five and transaction six? Transaction five and transaction six were transactions that I personally made when I was migrating funds out of my CASA 305 multi-sig. These transactions had 51 and 57 different UTXOs just spread throughout that wallet that I had to send out of that wallet. Luckily, I was able to to get them out of that wallet at not that bad of a sats per byte. So I got one out at eight sats per byte and one out at 10 sats per byte, which means that I only paid about $50 in fees, which is still, you know, it's pretty high, $50 a lot of money, but I really got away with it compared to those fees that we were dealing with just 11 weeks ago on the blockchain of here again, we're seeing that block of 156 sats per byte. And so if we just pretended that all of these numbers were in 156 sats per byte instead of the seven sats per byte that we're getting here today, we would see that I would have paid over $800 to send my Bitcoin out of my cold storage multi-sig into just any other wallet that I controlled. This brings us back to a tweet that sort of inspired this video. It was by Bitcoin Isaiah over on Twitter. And it says the people that are going to feel the most rugged are those that were told to self-custody, which is basically everyone, but who are left with a fraction of their BTC due to all of their UTXOs being small in an endless high fee environment. And then he goes on down here saying, let's say if someone is taking self-custody, every Every time they buy $10 worth of Bitcoin, which a lot of you guys are because you're using dollar cost averaging tools like Swan Bitcoin or River or the tools that I've created here on the channel to do API withdrawals out of exchanges and onto your cold storage hardware wallets. And they do this every day for years. All of that Bitcoin, like we just showed in this mempool example, is going to be practically worthless in a high fee environment. And that's because if we come back here, the issue with these big transactions is not that there's a lot of Bitcoin here. This could be $600 of total Bitcoin in both of these transactions. And you could end up sending 70% and 76% respectively in both of these transactions of the total amount of Bitcoin merged together in all of those UTXOs. You could end up sending a large amount of your Bitcoin stack out as fees simply because you have a ton of different UTXOs sitting in your wallet and you don't have a single big UTXO that you're trying to migrate over time. After this whole ordinal things, it's my opinion that at any point we could end up with some new feature on Bitcoin that creates a permanently higher fee environment. And I don't think the fees will persistently be at like a 600 plus sat per byte level like they were back when we were dealing with peak ordinals. But if they did ever get that high, if we just went here and we did the math on that, suddenly all of these transactions start to get very, very expensive. It's my hope that some of this like manual work that we have to do now around UTXO management is going to get automated out by software in the future. But at this point, I think it's prudent for everyone to take advantage of these low fee environments and to consolidate 
manipulate your UTXOs so that when you want to spend your Bitcoin in the future, you don't end up paying a ton of money in fees because you had a bunch of $5 UTXOs when you could have just had one $50 UTXO. If you want a full guide to UTXO consolidation, I'll leave the link to this article that I'm showing here on screen down in the description. Hopefully this video made sense. If you're sick of people talking about UTXOs, you think the whole thing is stupid, definitely let me know down in the comments. I was pretty surprised when I went to move money out of my Casa Multisig, not only how expensive the fees were to move all of those different UTXOs, but also how slow my hardware devices were. It took like 20 minutes in some cases, and I had to actually split it up into those two separate transactions because the Ledger Nano S couldn't handle a transaction full of more than 100 different UTXOs. The actual size of that transaction was too big for the Ledger to actually sign. And so overall, I think the thing that I'll be doing differently is withdrawing from exchanges on a less frequent schedule. I think it is still important to not keep more money than you're willing to lose on an exchange at a single period of time. But I think it's also important to, if you can avoid it, not create all of those really small UTXOs for yourself that you're going to have to manage at some point in the future. And I think that goes doubly for people that are using services like Swan, where they're often encouraging you to withdraw very small UTXOs of Bitcoin off the platform onto a cold storage wallet, which is totally good. But like Isaiah points out, a lot of people are going to feel rugged at some point in the future when all of their UTXOs end up being too small to even use in a super high fee environment. Comment down below if you have any questions or I lost you at any point, I do still respond to all the comments. Check out this video over here to learn more about how to automatically withdraw Bitcoin to your different hardware wallets. And check out these videos over here to learn more about my thoughts on Bitcoin. Love you all. See you next week.